Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I want to cover a quick topic because again, I'm getting a lot of questions on this. I get a lot of questions regarding spindle cables all the time, but I honestly have neglected doing a video on the ring connector end which interfaces with your VFD on how to assemble them, or at least the way I assemble them. Okay, so I'm just going to make a real quick video on this. It's a very simple process. You can see here how I have my leads all laid out. Okay, and you'll get this good if you practice enough. Um, you can see our shield drain coming in. There's a solder joint. Once again, using a heat shield to do this correctly, you want to insert this here. So naturally, this piece of double wall heat shrink protects all of those leads from when you apply the flux and the solder to actually join those. You can see that chrome finish. It's perfect. You can see that the lead is connected uh, in the proper length. You can also see the heat shrink is also uh, at proper length as far as coming across all terminals. And this is what the finished product looks like for my clients. So what I wanted to show you is, you see no protruding tin braided copper coming through the cable at all, which you shouldn't see. And again, I see that still being done. Uh, the idea is to remove all conductive material uh, from being exposed at all. I don't care if it's insulated. In best practice, it should be pushed pushed, excuse me, beneath the casing of the cable. And you can see right here, this is exactly what's been done. And again, that's done using probes. Then over here, I get asked all the time, how do you get the connectors so even? Well, let me show you magic. When you're working, you work on one connector at a time. Now, if I don't need this, I come back over here, and then I come over here. Then I come back over here, and I come over here. Again, this is years of practice, gentlemen. That's how we come up with this. And the better you learn your jigging, the better you can get your cables or whatever process you're doing. And again, if you want to work on them outright, you can lay them out. If the leads are cut properly to length, you can see exactly what you get. Uh, if I want to solder the shield drain, I then come over with a towel, use my trusty stay put. These are available in my store. I'm having a lot of trouble keeping them in stock. They move very quickly. If you're serious about soldering, I'm going to tell you right now, there's no other helping hand on the market that'll give you the value this will, and that's fact. Uh, coming over here, once again, this jigs these right into place. You'll want to pull them just slightly, put a little tension on them to keep the cable straight. And once again, we're right there. Insert your heat shield, and you are now ready to solder in flux. So again, very, very, very simple process. I'm just about ready to close this up for a client. And again, once you've soldered everything, you'll see that your heat shrink will curl a little bit, the double wall, which is perfectly fine. The main thing is that we're dissipating heat from this shield drain connected to the uh, ground drain um, silicone lead prior to naturally removing it so we don't burn our casing. This is close proximity soldering. If you're not capable of doing it, do not do it. Again, you can see those leads are flawless. So when the process is done correctly, you'll have proper penetration from the solder on the top and the solder on the bottom. I use a dental mirror to inspect the bottom to make sure we have full penetration and we're set to go. So again, I hope that this video has been helpful. Um, you can see I have all my heat shrink laid out, no different than you would do. Um, there is no secrets with this, guys. Um, this is a lot of practice. This is a lot of trial and error. Um, this is something uh, I feel that is a craft, it is a skill, and it just takes time. It'll come with time. Uh, you're going to have to pay very close attention to the details in my videos, like all my videos. I cover everything as explicitly as possible. If you didn't catch something, please watch it again, because again, there is a lot of detail with this. And the more you're trying to digest with your system, I find a lot of guys typically breeze over the video because, again, they're trying to get their system up and running. But this must be done with care. This is a three-phase power cable. And if it's not done with care, you risk potentially lethal side effects. So, again, EMI can be present if you assemble the cable incorrectly. But then, if we assemble it incorrectly on the other end, it could also lead to a, uh, a failure, and that could be catastrophic. Another question I was just asked is, why do I use ring connectors instead of fork connectors? Well, many of you already know that answer. Ring connectors do not pull out. These, once they're attached, the screw goes through the center, and if I went to pull this out, I'm, I'm literally going to have to destroy each lead because these are done with solder and flux. Again, solder, Kester number 44. The flux is Kester 186 RMA. It's best in the industry. 
and that is the proper way to do these cables so that once again we have proper safety implemented okay so now I'm going to get ready to boot the cable but again showing you this in a dissected format doing a kind of uh, cable autopsy you can see exactly what we have here so I thank you all for your support. Once again, if you want to contact me for questions, uh, consultations, quotes, whatever it may be, please message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me through my eBay store. You'll see uh, links in the beginning of the video and at the end. To all my subscribers, we are growing like crazy. I really want to thank you all for your support. Take care.